Come in close. A little bit closer. I'm about to start a riot with what I'm going to say next. I'm about to tell you why I believe that the Precision Knife Works Warntack is actually the knife of the year here in 2023. And that is a super bold statement to make given how many knives have been released in that price range that have been made with premium materials, premium design language from some of your favorite knife designers made by some of the best manufacturers that money can currently buy knives from. So why is it that I believe that the Precision Knife Works Warntack is quite possibly the knife of the year here in 2023? Let's talk about it. I'm Roll Shambo, the connoisseur and collector of all things sharp and shiny, and this is the Precision Knife Works Warntack. <laughs> oh man guys i am super super excited about this one and shout out to dan hosen of precision knife works because i really really do you see this is a knife that i saw on a lot of different channels and it's been tough this year to figure out what am i going to get for the channel who am i going to reach out to and so it's always nice one places reach out to me and offer to send something my way whether it's a gift or whether it's a loaner especially knives like this and in the box it does have some paperwork this paperwork is just going to basically give a rundown of the specs of the knife and if you've watched the other reviews chances are you've already seen it so i'm going to go ahead and put it away and i'll pop the important stuff up on the screen in a bit but this is what you're here for. This is what I'm here for. This is what I am so excited to talk about. Inside this pouch is a knife that came around, I wanna say about nine or 10 months ago. So I get it, I'm late to the game, but baby, better late than never because this is the Precision Knife Works Warn Tack. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is good. That is so freaking good. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna clear this stuff off the table. Uh, we'll talk about the specs, we'll talk about the materials, what it's made out of, the good, the bad, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Let's go ahead and clear this stuff off the table and talk about the PKW Warm Tack. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about the price. Uh, initially, these were going to be over $300, however, now they are selling for $250 after the pre-order, which is fantastic. That $250 will get this shipped to you anywhere in the continental U.S. Uh, the OEM is QSP, and I know in the past when I mentioned OEMs, I do get comments where they say, where is it made? Where is the, where is the, I forget that not everybody knows all of this stuff. And so in case you were wondering, QSP is indeed a Chinese manufacturer. However, uh, they do make some really, really cool stuff and they do a pretty dang good job. As far as the specs are concerned, we've got a three and a half inch blade paired with a four and a half inch handle. The blade is made out of CPM 20 CV and it features this really nice hollow grind which gets very, very thin and slicey behind that edge. I'm talking about 18 thousandths behind the edge and if that's, well, if that's not slicey enough for you, the good news is, is that he does have a hand ground, hollow ground version that goes down as far as 10 thousands behind the edge. That's, well, that's bananas, absolutely bananas. On the handle scales, we have some micro milling and these handle scales are titanium. Also, all of the hardware is titanium as well. We're looking at standoffs, no backspacer here, but we do have a 3D milled titanium pocket clip, which is in fact reversible. The pivot is running on ceramic bearings and is a single sided captive pivot. And of course we have a frame lock as well. The frame lock is going to be coming in at about 40%. Yeah, 
pretty crazy, right? Uh, this knife has one deployment option and that is going to be this deployment hole. You can of course reverse flick it, but that deployment hole makes this knife a reverse flicker's dream. There is a more than cursory amount of this really toothy jimping on the spine of the blade, which is fantastic for getting a good grip. And I think that's a great segue into what I like about this knife. And hold on to your butts, guys, because there's quite a lot. And I already mentioned the jimping, but normally when I talk about jimping on a knife, I'm mentioning that it's a cursory amount that ends about right there and that I wish that there was more. I don't have to do that on this knife. It's already there. The jimping far exceeds what normally is found on premium knives and i like it i like the fact that it is grippy it's very toothy but it's not going to tear your hand apart it's going to be really good in a saber type grip what about a pinch grip oh yeah that's going to be just fine as well the handle scales are very very comfortable everything is nicely chamfered over and knocked down it's very well done and the pocket clip while it does not stand out that's the point it doesn't stand out it doesn't take away from the aesthetics it doesn't take away from the ergonomics that is fantastic uh, something that i like to talk about that is highly underrated in knives is the balance and the balance point on this knife is going to be right where you put your index finger and that's fantastic especially if you're like me and you like to practice your dexterity and I know some people have asked me like how do you do those you know the knife flipping thing guys it's just based on dexterity and i've been working on that for a long time just to even get a little bit good at it by no means am i super good and in case you want to see that in slow motion that's what it looks like and then of course if you speed it up that's what it looks like uh, i can't do that with every single knife but I can do that with this knife because it's got excellent balance and it's very, very easy to index. The knife is extremely slicey. I love the fact that he offers a regrind on his own blade. Like he's like, here's the factory blade, but you know, if you really want it to be a shark with a freaking laser beam attached to its forehead, I'm happy to regrind that to 10 thousandths behind the edge. You know, I have one simple request. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Dan, you mad scientist. I mean, who needs it that... Guys, look, this knife is extremely slicey as it is. And I'll go ahead and put my cut test up here on the screen. It slices, it dices. It's a freaking lightsaber through paper. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, you know, what's the big deal about that? Everything can cut paper. It's not about... It cutting paper it's about how well it cuts paper there's no torn edges there's there's no rough cuts it glides through and that's with the factory edge and that's with the factory grind this knife is beautiful the micro milling is genius uh, this is the kind of micro milling that honestly a lot of people expect to find on a koenig arius but here it is on a 250 dollar worn tack that's fantastic. That's absolutely fantastic because not only does it look good, it's going to resist snail trails over time and it's going to make it hard to drop this knife. Gripping this knife is extremely easy and you're not going to be disappointed when you index it. Even in a reverse grip, it's comfortable. I really like how thin and stabby it is up here at the front, especially for utility purposes because if you're trying to pierce through tape or through cardboard, it's going to get the job done in just about any position you put it in. Warren Cliffs are an amazing blade shape. And one of the reasons why knife enthusiasts like myself geek out over them is because they're great in so many different scenarios, whether that's utility or in self-defense. Don't believe me? Just go watch some videos from Michael Janich where he waxes about how great Warren Cliffs are for self-defense. Believe it or not, they're arguably one of the best, if not the best blade shape for that. That makes it extremely versatile, whether you're you know, in a warehouse getting work done like Dan, the designer, or whether you are someone that is trying to protect your life. Uh, I always believe in carrying a knife because you never know what situations you're gonna fall into during your day and it's always best to be prepared. I also really like this action. Now, it is not a guillotine action, but it is very smooth and very purposeful. Uh, you might be wondering, well, could they have gotten a guillotine action? I mean, 
maybe <laughs> the the knife weighing 3.6 ounces overall is fantastic but it also means that the blade doesn't have a whole lot of weight behind it to make it super fall shut that's not a con in my opinion that's not something that i would uh, slander this blade for because i'd much rather have a really nice eight inch knife uh, that weighs 3.6 ounces the first time i picked this up i thought is this actually titanium because this is extremely light and then I looked on the inside and found out that there is so much pocketing going on in there. That's how they achieved this super light weight. And while I typically do prefer to have a backspacer to protect the edge of the blade, not having one allows it to maintain that light carry profile. Let's go ahead and do a quick comparison up against a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. All right, so here it is against a Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And as you can see, these are pretty close in overall size. I'd say that the Paramilitary 2 is maybe a, a tiny bit longer. Uh, as far as the carry profile is concerned, these are dead on perfect for each other. These are literally the same carry profile. Spyderco Paramilitary 2 is going to have a little bit of height on it due to the hump right there in the blade. But other than that, these are very, very close. You can tell that Dan paid great attention to what consumers already like and what they ask for frequently because it matches up so well with the Paramilitary 2. I'm here to tell you that if you like a Paramilitary 2, you're going to like the Warn Tack. Now let's go ahead and talk about what I don't like. And that's it. You might be wondering, but, but Rolls, you didn't say anything. I know. There is nothing that I can bash this knife about, guys. And uh, honestly, I'm I'm extremely impressed. I am extremely impressed, and I'm shocked that this knife has not gotten more praise from more people. I know other channels have reviewed this knife, but I truly believe that this could be a contender for knife of the year in the 2023 two to three hundred dollar price range. That's insanity. You know how many knives have been released in that price range that are absolutely fantastic? A lot. And yes, that is, in fact, my opinion. You, you are also welcome to disagree with me. If there's just so much to like about this knife and nothing that I dislike, that's fantastic. I'm extremely impressed. And honestly, I think that the most impressive part is that it's 250 bucks. I mean, not only is there zero billboarding on this knife, but he checked all the boxes. We're talking about perfect fit and finish, perfect blade centering, perfect blade lockout. There is no lock bar issues. There is no detent lash. There is no pivot lash. The action is sublime. It's fidgety. It's fidgety because it's so well made, not because it has one million and one deployment options, because on a knife like this, it just doesn't need one. They had a massive opportunity to turn this deployment hole into a fingernail grater, but it's not. They perfectly knocked down those edges. They could have really mailed it in on the detent, but they didn't. The detent is perfectly tuned. He could have gone with T6 body screws and I would have called it a nitpick, but he didn't. He could have gone with a cursory amount of jimping on the spine of the blade, but he didn't. This knife has a metric ton of thought that's gone into it, and I appreciate that. All the way to the point where he put a filler tab on the show side scale to account for the fact that the pocket clip is ambidextrous. You know how big of a deal that is, by the way? For them to design a knife at this price range that is ambidextrous with a reversible pocket clip, only about 15% of the population are left-handed. And out of those, how many do you think saw a video on a Warn Tack? To commit to that is impressive. One tiny suggestion that I would have had is to take this micro milling and have it also on that filler tab. To have it line up like that would have been absolutely next level, and that is not even a con. The fact that it's there at all, I'm a big fan of, but that would have been next level 
had the micro milling translated onto that filler tab. I, I would have just lost my marbles even more than I already have. Uh, so much so, guys, that I'm really looking forward to ranking this knife. And if you want to see that ranking, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe. If you want to watch more awesome knife content, click on the video that pops up next.